like to welcome you all to the Southgate Mothers Club. Before we start the usual business on the agenda, I want that all of you should observe a moment of silence and compassion for Mrs. Tompkins. Mrs. Tompkins' kid, Humberto, was picked up this morning on a murder one rap. Now we know that Mrs. Tompkins has not had a lot of time to spend at home with her kids. She's been very busy on the juvenile delinquency committee. All right, now to the usual business. First of all, a report on next weekend's activities from our next weekend's activities reporter. Very happy to have Agnes once again. Here she is, Agnes once again. Thank you very much, Miss President. Well, of course, next weekend is our annual fudge fair. Now we hold the fudge fair each year at this time to gather enough money to get the needy children of the neighborhood out of the neighborhood for the summer. If it were possible, we'd like to get them out for the winter, too. <laughs> now, I found a lovely tract of land that we can establish our summer camp on, and I think, I think we could fill it with ropes and boards, an abandoned icebox or two, some plastic bags, <laughs> and they can play to their little ethnic heart's content. Now, another little bonus, the edge of the Southgate River runs right near the camp except during flood season, that it inundates the camp. The camp will be held during flood season this year. So that's it, and I would like to remind you girls, fudge. I think it behooves us all to get out and push the fudge. Now, next of all, we got a book review by a very well-known book reviewer in this area, Miss Thelma Reese from the Van Nuys Times. Mm -hmm. Here she is, Thelma. Mm, she's wonderful. Thank you very much. Books live. Books are vibrant and alive. Now, the book I have chosen to review for you this afternoon is about two brothers. The book is called The Two Brothers. It deals with a set of Siamese twins joined at the lips. <laughs> the boys are raised in the dumbwaiter shaft of a home for unwed mothers. After struggling through puberty, the boys are separated following a series of successful operations at the Mayo Clinic. Now then, after the operation, the boys move apart. One moves to Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. The other to La Jolla, California. The first portion of the book deals with the letters the boys write to one another. And they do write back and forth, forth and back, one to the other, each to his brother. The first 500 pages of the book drag considerably, but the book ends in a virtual whirlwind of activity. As the older brother, Raoul, living in sin with a male model, <laughs> sends an airmail letter to his brother Congolia, who at that time is gainfully employed as a prompter in a Christian science reading room in Elsinore, California. <laughs> Now then, Raoul forgets to put a stamp on the envelope. The letter is returned to him forthwith, and the book ends on that note. Oh, God. Four stars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too, Thelma, for a very fine book report. Okay, now to kind of wind things up, and we do want to hustle a little along so we can get down to Charlie's before he closes. We got next of all a report on next week's guest speaker. And that, of course, will be reported by our next weekend's guest speaker reporter. Here is Eileen. Eileen. Thank you very much. Well, next weekend is also our Bonds for Israel weekend. Our guest speaker was to have been a Mr. Adolf Eichmann. <laughs> However, Mr. Eichmann has an indefinite booking in the Middle East. That's showbiz. <laughs> so, in his stead, we have a lovely young lady from the State Hygienic Board... Mrs. Phyllis Carswell. Her subject will be sex play among our children between six and nine, and again between nine and midnight. 